in this video i am going to explain principle gels used advantages disadvantages and applications of gel electrophoresis if you are new on my channel please subscribe now let's start introduction and principle of gel electrophoresis gel electrophoresis is a separation technique it is mainly used for separation of nucleic acids and proteins separation of mixture is based on charge and size of the sample molecules here size means molecular weight of sample molecules in this technique migration of charged particles takes place through gel under the influence of electric field particles with positive charge move towards cathode and particles with negative charge move towards anode gels have porous or sieve like structure due to which sample molecules get separated according to their size gels are having sieve or mesh like structure and that's why the sample is having uh, sample is separated due to this sieving effect the small size particles will migrate fast while the large size particles will migrate slowly the overall principle of electrophoresis experimentation and uh, overall electrophoresis i have explained in the previous video link is given in the description box now steps involved in gel electrophoresis first step is sample preparation second is addition of dye preparation of buffer fourth step is preparation of gel or gel slab or gel tube performing electrophoresis and last is detection and analysis of sample all these steps i have explained in previous video link is given in the description box today we will see gels used in gel electrophoresis and preparation of gel slab now let's start gels used in electrophoresis first is star gel second is agarose gel third is polyacrylamide gel these are the most commonly used gels in it. now we'll see starch starch can be used in tubes as well as in slabs form porosity of starch is less uniform as compared to the agarose gel it is used for separation of macromolecules on the basis of charge and molecular size starch tubes as well as starch slabs can be used for separation of macromolecules now we'll go for agarose gel agarose is most widely used polysaccharide gel it is composed of repeating disaccharide units of agarobiose agarose gives more uniform degree of porosity than starch agarose is used in 1% and 2% gel large pore size is produced by less concentration of agarose and smaller pore size is produced by more concentration of agarose that means we can control pore size by controlling concentration of agarose in gel separation is based on mass to charge ratio of sample particles it is mainly used for separation of dna fragments advantages of agarose gel it is easy to prepare resolution is better than starch gel and paper disadvantages electroendosmosis is seen with the agarose gel because sulfate molecules are present in agarose surface and which show electroendosmosis phenomena purity of gel is the major issue here it if it has more number of sulfate groups then agarose is less pure now we'll see agarose gel slab preparation the first step in world here is specified amount of agarose powder is weighed and it is dissolved in boiling water or it is added to a buffer solution and then it is boiled to form a transparent solution after some cooling this transparent solution is poured in a casting tray which has comb in such a way that the air bubble should not be produced this is the casting tray which has combs 
here two combs are provided but we can use one comb or it depends on experiment which we are performing comb can be used at the center of uh, casting tray or it can be used uh, at the side of casting tray here we have to pour agarose so this casting tray is then kept aside at room temperature for 15 to 20 minutes to solidify the gel after gel formation comb is removed from gel and sample wells are created due to this comb in this way comb is removed and sample wells are created due to this comb now this solidified agarose slab with sample wells is removed from casting tray and used in electrophoresis equipment during the boiling followed by cooling process of agarose gel rearrangement of hydrogen bond takes place and due to this rearrangement interchain cross linking occurs due to which the gel becomes porous next is polyacrylamide gel it is prepared by polymerization of acrylamide monomer with cross linking reagent methylene bis acrylamide acrylamide is normally sold in liquid form because in powder form it is neurotoxic and dangerous to handle for polymerization of acrylamide two more chemicals are required one is ammonium presulfate as a source of free radical and other is tetramethyl ethylene diamine as a stabilizer gel is prepared in buffer and not in water a clear transparent gel is obtained which is chemically inert and me mechanically stable the pore size decreases with increasing concentration of acrylamide but at high and low concentration of cross linking agent the pore size is large the minimum pore size is obtained at 4% cross linking agent it means that if we use high concentration of acrylamide pore size will decrease but a uh, optimum concentration of cross linking agent is required to decrease the pore size it is mainly prepared in vertical form the gel is mainly prepared in vertical form it is used in vertical electrophoresis horizontal polyacrylamide gels are also prepared now we'll see advantages and disadvantages of polyacrylamide gel first we'll go for advantages the pore size produced in polyacrylamide gel is small in comparison to agarose and starch gel better resolution is obtained Electroendoosmosis is not seen in case of polyacrylamide gel. Now disadvantages. First is polyacrylamide is neurotoxic in nature. It is mainly used in vertical form. Uh, these vertical gel slabs are difficult to prepare. So these are advantages and disadvantages of polyacrylamide gel. Polyacrylamide gel can be prepared in two forms that is native gel and denaturing gel. Now we will see what is native gel and what is denaturing gel. Native gel, these gels do not cause denaturing of sample structure. That means they do not disturb samples natural structure. Due to this sample molecules are separated according to their natural size, shape and charge they are very sensitive to confirmation differences of secondary structure of sample but non denaturing polyacrylamide gels cannot be used for determination of fragment length because the sample is in folded form so total length cannot be determined by using native gels when these native gels are used if we don't want to disturb secondary structure of analyte molecule then native gels are used for example isolating enzymes enzymes have specific structure and specific conformation depending on that structure and conformation they show their action 
and if we want to study that conformation native gels are used because native gels do not disturb the natural structure of uh, molecule if we want to know in which state our analyte is that means whether it is in circular form or it is in linear form if we want to know the natural state of analyte then native gels are used these native gels are more simple to prepare and less expensive next is denaturing gels these gels disturb natural structure of analyte causing it unfolding into linear chain that means the folded structure is disturbed and a linear structure is produced due to denaturing of proteins due to this sample molecules are separated according to their linear length and mass to charge ratio secondary tertiary and quaternary structures of macromolecules are disturbed in denaturing gels when these denaturing gels are used if we want to determine purity of sample if we want to prepare a protein sequencing two separate molecules based on their mass then denaturing gels are used nucleic acids are often denatured by using urea in buffer urea dmso gly glyoxol are most commonly used denaturing agent for while proteins are denatured using sodium dodecyl sulfate as sds polyacrylamide gel in reducing polyacrylamide method beta mercaptoethanol or dithiotheritol is used to denature proteins now we'll go for advantages and disadvantages of gel electrophoresis advantages of gel electrophoresis gel medium reduces heat production during experiment and due to this they reduces diffusion of separated sample zones gel provides molecular sieve like structure and causes separation based on molecular size gel slabs can be prepared for vertical horizontal electrophoresis gel electrophoresis is also performed in tubes polyacrylamide gels are mechanically stable due to which post electrophoretic work is possible such as blotting electroelution or mass spectroscopy identification now disadvantages of gel electrophoresis it is not a precise technique it is a semi quantitative type of technique to get exact mass of protein one has to go for mass spectroscopy it is used for analysis of specific samples such as nucleic acids proteins that means macro molecules are determined by electrophoresis small molecules such as small hormones neurotransmitters ions cannot be separated or measured by electrophoresis speed of analysis and data production is slow these three disadvantages are not only associated with gel electrophoresis but they are applicable to all types of electrophoresis now we'll move towards applications of gel electrophoresis gel electrophoresis is a widely used technique in molecular biology and biochemistry lab first application of gel electrophoresis is agarose gel electrophoresis is widely used in separation of dna molecules polyacrylamide gels are mainly used for protein separation and analysis Gel electrophoresis is used in forensic analysis for separation of DNA fragments for DNA fingerprinting to investigate crime scenes. Gel electrophoresis is used in DNA profiling. It is also used in analysis of PCR products. It is used to study structure and functions of 
proteins. It is used for analysis of antibiotic resistance. Many applications are there with gel electrophoresis. I have covered few applications. Now these are the points which uh, are associated with gel electrophoresis. I hope you understood all these points. If you like my video, please share it and subscribe my channel and thank you for watching my video. Thank you very much.